Hi learners, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at the teams in The River Between by Ugugiwan Tiongo. The River Between is a novel written by Ugugiwan Tiongo that explores the disunity, the division between two people, between two villages in the Gukuyi tribe in Kenya. Uh, we have discussed the plot of the novel before extensively. We discussed the characters and characterization. We also have looked at some of the literary devices. So today we'll be looking at the themes in the novel and we'll be looking at them one after another. The first thing we are going to be discussing is colonialism and imperialism. In fact, the beginning of the in the beginning of the novel, we were told about the coming of the colonialists to the Kenyan society and uh, how colonialism has taken root in the villages, not only in the metropolitan areas, in the villages as well. And missionaries are setting up schools and other religious institutions in the villages. And we saw that uh, there are a lot of government posts collecting tax from people. At the beginning, the two major villages who are explored in the novel, that is the Kameno village and the Makuyu village, we are not so concerned about the tax because it does not affect them. Now, it is affecting them through religion. So colonialism presence in the villages are more of religious influence because the Makuyu village and the Kameno village were traditional African worshippers who practice their paganism, who practice their traditional religion. But now Makui have accepted uh, Christianity and it is as a result of colonialism. So Kenya was colonized and then the people were exploited and we even saw the exploitation in the religious institution, especially the mission school set up in Syriana where Mr. Livingstone, who is the representative of the missionaries and also the white men in the novel, spare the children of those who are not Christians. So the children of the pagans we expel. One of them is Waiyaki, Kamau, Kintunia, and uh, several other students, especially those from Kameno village. So we saw that uh, Christianity comes to Kenya with the advent of colonialism and then the Makui people, almost majority of them, have uh, accepted Christianity and they were exploited. Why the people in Kameno saw it as an exploitation, even the coming of Christianity, some of their converts like Joshua sees uh, Christianity as the best way of life. Okay? Now, we saw dedication to a cause. That is another theme in the novel. We have two major characters that are uh, totally dedicated to their cause. One of them is Wayaki. Wayaki was sent by his father to the mission school in Seriana for the purpose of learning the wisdoms and the knowledge of the white man so that he can be able to fight the white man. And he can be able to fight the fight white, white man and decolonize Kenyan society. And what happened when uh, he went there was that uh, he accepted the cause he was studying for many years in Syriana, but later he was expelled because his father has refused to convert to Christianity. And uh, he, did, he made up his mind through the prophecy that was even revealed to him by his father, Chege, that he is going to dedicate himself to liberating his people from colonialism. And he want to do that through Western education. So you could see the way he want to free his people. He want to free, free them using the instrument of uh, colonial, colonialism, which is uh, a Western education. And then uh, he, he set up a school in his village in Kameno. And then Podas, who we expect like uh, Kamau, who is the son of a uh, Kamboi, and um, um, Kitua, he has employed them as teachers in the school. So he dedicated himself to that to make sure he liberates his people through Western education. But later, at the end of the novel, we saw that uh, Western education only is not enough for the liberation of the people. Another character that dedicated himself is Joshua. Joshua in fact, Joshua can be called a religious extremist in the sense that uh, he even does not care if his own children die. 
even if, because they did not accept his way of life, especially the Christian notion of a lifestyle that uh, Joshua embraces or practices. So Joshua was so dedicated to the Christian. He's one of their first converts when the missionaries came with the colonialists. So Joshua was so concerned about his own Christianity to the extent that he even disowned his daughter, Mutoni, and another daughter, Uyambura, because they were not practicing Christianity the way he wanted them to. So he was so dedicated and even he canceled everything about religion, everything about, uh, everything about tradition of his people. The Gikuyu tradition, he totally abandoned it and continued confessing that the correct course to follow is uh, Western Christianity or Christianity. Okay, that is it. And um, we have another major thing in the novel, which is the uh, individual versus community. In the novel, we have, I can say, about four characters who are against uh, a community. One of them is Waiyaki. Waiyaki went against his community or communal notion. He went against the notion of his people by falling in love with Uyambura and at the same time by even promoting Western education more than the tradition of his people, Gikuyu. And this, his people saw this, the community saw this as a form of betrayal. So they decided to talk, okay, they are going to do with a Waiyaki. So when Waiyaki professes his love for Unyambura, it was a, a form of an individual clashing with communal notions, communal belief, communal tradition. Because the Kameno community does not want to have anything to do with a Christian lady, a Christian gear that is not circumcised. One of the traditions of the Kameno community is that every female child must undergo circumcision. And it is even the same in the uh, Makui community also. But now that the Makui have embraced Christianity, most of them, especially their female young ones, do not undergo any form of circumcision. Now, Waiyaki, from the traditionally reviled uh, Kameno community, want to marry a Christian gay, uncircumcised lady. And that also pitch him against the community. And then another one, his desire to promote Western education and is more concerned about the Western education, believing that he can get independence for his people through Western education without recourse to any other aspect of his own tradition was another form of a confrontation between him as an individual and as community. Another character that went against community or pitch against community is Unyambura. The Christian community does not want Uyambura to have anything to do with uh, Waiyaki because Waiyaki is a pagan. He's a pagan. He's somebody who worship tradition, who practice African traditional religion, and should not uh, Waiyaki should not marry or be yoked with someone that is not of the same faith with her. But unfortunately, it was a form of a disappointment and betrayal that the Christian community also could not stop Uyambura from. Uh, loving uh, Waiyaki. Even when there was no formal marriage between them, their relationship was very intimate and close that everyone in the Christian community and even in the communal community of Waiyaki were aware of their relationship. And this does not go down well with many of them. It was a form of a betrayal. It is a form of an individual clashing with the community. And as a result of that, the father of Uyambura, Joshua, disowned her. He disowned her because he has gone against the, com the Christian community by falling in love, uh, building a relationship with somebody who is a pagan. And another character that, uh, in the case of individual versus community, is Mutoni. Mutoni is a younger daughter of Joshua as well. How did Mutoni uh, was pitched against community? Because the community, the Christian community that the father belongs to, do not undergo any form of uh, female circumcision. Now, Mutoni believes that, okay, he can blend Christian virtues with that of traditional practices. And uh, Mutoni accepted to be circumcised, which the father did not want. And as a result of that, the father disowned uh, her. 
and the circumcision uh, uh, led to a lot of uh, bleeding and uh, medical complication, which led to the death of Mutoni. And even when Mutoni died, the father was not concerned. Even when they told him, he was not concerned because, as far as he was concerned, Mutoni has chosen the, the will of the pagans, and uh, he cannot be worried about her. In fact, the behavior of Joshua was what made uh, Cambry to retreat or to to leave the Christian faith and return to his uh, traditional practices because the behavior of uh, Joshua when Mutuni died was worrisome. He does not care that his own daughter died. And that was uh, one of the two. So at the end, we saw that uh, Wayaki was pitched against the community and later, in fact, he lost his respect and leadership because Kamboyi uh, used that one as a bait to hunt him and then accuse him publicly before the members of the community, in which many of the people do not do no longer believe in the leadership of uh, uh, Wakayaki. Then another one is that of betrayer. In fact, uh, majority of the characters in the novel are betrayed, or they consider themselves to be betrayed by others. Now, one of the characters is Joshua. Who betrayed Joshua? Joshua felt that his daughters, Mutoni and Unyambra, betrayed him by not adhering strictly to the Christian rules and doctrine. Mutoni engaged in circumcision, which the Christian community frowned at. Unyambra fell in love with Yawayaki, who is a pagan. And that is also another form of betrayal. So Joshua was so concerned about how the daughter betrayed uh, him. And in fact, he does not want to do anything with them. And that was why he disowned them. Now, another one that was betrayed is uh, Wayaki. Who betrayed Wayaki? Kamau, the son of Kamboi, betrayed Wayaki. Because every of his step was a plan to betray Wayaki to make the community fight Wayaki to make the community be at loggerhead with Wayaki because Kamau himself was interested in Unyambura. Unyambura was a beautiful Christian girl and uh, Kamau who is the son of a Kamboi a traditionalist also was interested in her. So when he saw that, okay, well, Uyambura and Wayaki are already in love, he was so angry and was looking for a way to bring Wayaki down. And he used to, he used to communicate anything he sees about Wayaki and Uyambura to his father, Kamboy, and then the father will summon the elder smithy and use it to accuse Wayaki publicly. In fact, at a point, the, the, the elders asked uh, Wayaki to denounce his relationship with uh, Unyambra, which he refused. And the elders saw it as a great betrayer that Wayaki has betrayed the oath that is going to protect, the oath he took that is going to protect the purity of the tribe, of the Gikuyu tribe. And uh, Wayaki has, has accepted to marry a Christian girl, which is against the, the, the oath that they took that, okay, they are going to preserve their lifestyle, their tradition, and their tribe. So that is another form of uh, a betrayal. In fact, I can even say that Livingstone, the head of the mission school, also betrayed Wayaki, Kamau, and Kintuya, and some of other boys from uh, Kameno village that went to the school to go and study. They were studying for years, and because their father have refused to accept Christianity, they were expelled from the school. That is also another form of betrayal, because they were first accepted to the school, even though the, the, the school was aware, the school management was aware that their parents were pagans. But later they removed them, they expelled them because of having pagan parents. And that was also another form of betrayal, exploitation, even colonialism, the way the colonials, the colonialists exploited the people were another form of betrayal because in the north, eh, the colonialists came with the notion that okay, they are going to oh, rather civilize the people, but instead of civilizing, they exploited the people. So there are several uh, form of betrayal in the in the, in the novel. Okay, then another one is unity and division. 
Kameno village and um, Mukuyu village, we are where united communities. And one of the things that served as a streamline of their unity was the river Honia, which passes in between the two villages. Now, the unity was tempered with as a result of the coming of the colonialists and the, the acceptance of Christianity by the people of Makuyu. The unity became more destroyed and the division became more wide when Motoni died. Motoni was a Christian girl from Makuyi. Now, he was circumcised and then a lot of complication happened and she died. So the death of Motoni now has brought more pain to the people of Makui because they do not want to be engaging in circumcision again as a result of the acceptance of Christianity. Majority of them accepted, accepted Christianity. There are still few people who are uh, traditionalists among them. So the death of Mutoni has made it look as if the people of Kameno were responsible for the death of Mutoni because they were the ones still promoting the female circumcision. And also, even the unity, the, 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 the division was not only in between the two villages. It also boiled down to even the Kameno community. We Kamboi was planning to pitch the community against uh, uh, Waiyaki. And also, there was also uh, a disunity between Kamau and Waiyaki. They were friends before. There was unity be between them. But now that Waiyaki have embraced a relationship with Uyambura, it has caused a lot of jealousy that Kamau now have also pitched himself against Waiyaki. And also, in the family of Joshua, there were a lot of division. Before, all of them were united as Christian uh, family. Because uh, uh, Joshua, his wife, Maria, Miriam, and then the daughter, Unyabura, then the younger daughter, uh, Motoni, all of them have accepted Christianity. Though Joshua used to beat his wife for the circumcision he, he, she underwent when she was a child. At that time, she was not married to Joshua. But Joshua was still punishing her for that one for the circumcision and now there was a lot of division among them because the father and the child and the daughter are no longer in good terms joshua have this uh disowned Uyambra for engaging in love relationship with the uh, uh, waiyaki and uh, he has disowned mutoni because mutoni have accepted the circumcision and now there was division among them so joshua was more like he was alone and the wife miriam also was alone the daughter Uyambra was alone the daughter Mutoni was even alone before her death. So you could see the division between the two communities, the two villages, also the division in the families, and even the division among the elders because even Wayaki has become an elder. But Kamboyina has betrayed or has been planning to deal with him, and that led to division among them who were united before. The another one is tradition versus progress. Now, the people of Makui village sees themselves as a progressive community which have seen, that have seen the light, have embraced Christianity, which is the light according to the context of their belief in the novel. And we see the traditionalists or those who adhere to the tradition, which are, who are the, um, the people from Kameno community. And then uh, we saw that there was a difference between them. So we see that... Uh, Tradition is significant. Why progress or progression is also significant to the people of Makui. Why tradition is significant to the people of uh, Kameno. And we saw that uh, there was uh, uh, an attempt to reconcile tradition and uh, Christianity, or you can call it progress, by Waiyaki and Motoni, but did not work out. Waiyaki was trying to, uh, to blend Christianity and uh, uh, tradition together, especially in the in the aspect where they can work on work together, especially like getting married to a Christian girl Uyambura. But all that attempt hit a brick wall because the people never accept such. Then Mutoni also was as was an we made attempt to also to bring Christianity and the tradition together to fush the he want a fusion between them. That is, she's a Christian girl and she want to also engage in the traditional female circumcision, which led to her death. So the death of Mutoni 
It also led to the, the death of relationship between tradition and Christianity or tradition and progress. And also the punishment method to Wayaki and Unyambra also had shown that uh, the relationship between tradition and progress of Christianity was almost uh, uh, and, and what nothing or it does not even exist now another one and the final one is christianity tribal custom and identity how can we identify the people especially some of them like uh, uyambra can we identify uyambra as a christian though a christian girl who has accepted to marry somebody or who have accepted to date somebody who is a traditionalist wayaki can we accept her as a Christian? The Christian community have rejected her for engaging in such kind of love relationship with somebody who is not a Christian. And uh, can we say that uh, Awayaki is a thorough traditionalist? He has accepted education as a vital part of life. And there uh, is saw nothing wrong with uh, engaging or frolicking with a Christian lady. So can we still call Awayaki uh, a, a traditionalist you can also respond to this uh, through the comment section so what can we call them so we can call them a blend of christianity and tradition that is uh, mutoni and uh, nyambra and uh, wayaki so we saw that uh, the identity was even uh, a kind of hybrid because some of them who accepted christianity also still see something good in traditional practices why the Christian community does not want them to see anything good in traditional practices. Rather, they should destroy every element and vestiges of uh, tradition. So, we see that uh, there were a lot of uh, Christianity, a lot of challenges or, cri or identity crisis among the people. Because they believe if you are a Christian, nothing should join you or nothing should relate you to tradition. So, we saw that uh, the river between tests of two rival villages that struggled to unite rather than remain opposed. An attempt to unite, which was made by Mutoni and uh, uh, Wayaki, also hit break war, as I said earlier. So, chief among Makui and Kameno's disagreement are now trying to respond to how they can unite. But they, some of them, especially from the Kameno, decided that they will maintain the tribal purity by not engaging in anything that has to do with Christianity. So we saw that uh, that also has led to identity crisis, identity crisis in the novel. So um, Christianity and custom, uh, we can see a bit fusion of it in the novel. So uh, please subscribe so that uh, you can get, um, at, we have come to the end of the lesson, so that you can get notified any other time a video is uploaded. Thank you.